You're a good, good God. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. That's who I am. That's who I am. That's who I am. You're a good, good God. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you, that's who I am. Inspire me to be the highest me, mommy motivation. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to Dr. Z Lessons. If you are new here, I'm Z. I share lessons in faith, family, and fulfillment. I hope that by sharing my lessons, it helps you to embrace your own. There was something really piercing on my heart to share. I was going to do another video all together, but um, I just felt a nudge to really be able to talk about this topic and um, hope you all are encouraged. Thank you all for tuning in to our homeschool series. It was such a great time being able to do that for my kiddos. And if you missed any part of that video, I will link it in the description box. Today's vid though is just all about father's love and I know this is a topic that can be a little bit um, complicated. I probably use that word because um, we all come to reference a father in different ways depending on our upbringing, uh, depending on our history, our past, and circumstances. And so today I just felt like even if there's one person that I am to encourage that I want to be able to do so with a sharing of my story as well as to be able to honor um, the fathers that are in my life and to, um, to say thank you. My father went to prison when I was born. I came to really know him for the first time once he got out of prison. So you could say that my relationship was delayed. And um, there's a lot of things that I questioned throughout my teenage years about what it meant to really honor uh, a father. I questioned it to the point that I actually told God, I don't see how that's even possible. And that if I was to do that based on his word, that he would have to show me and have to be the one to do it. And I think it's important to be honest about where we are in our relationships because uh, they really do play out in the relationships that we uh, attract. And so I was on this run for trying to fill voids and trying to experience what it is to feel love and to feel accepted. Uh, and I ran into relationships seeking that and not really having a firm grasp on identity. And um, I can remember being 15 years old and um, feeling like I was going to lose my mind, like I was on the brink of a breakdown. I was doing all sorts of craziness, um, just in terms of, of needing to feel in control and um, trying my best to manage the emotional scars of feeling like I was fatherless. Um, even though I, at that time, had my father in my life, uh, there were so many things that I felt uh, rejected in and that um, he couldn't um, that he didn't love me and there's nothing like an empty feeling from a child whose identity is it kind of formed by their parents to feel like they don't belong or that they're not wanted and so I didn't know what to do with that pain I didn't know, know what to do with the emotional uh, ramifications of it and so I just went all out and wild out I lashed out I rebelled and I didn't have a space for really even being able to love myself, nonetheless, anyone else. And I just want to tell you that it doesn't matter how old you are, how much you age, how far away or removed from your past that you may be, that you can still be experiencing the emotional scars and the pain from past hurts and past relationships. And those things can still be the impetus for why you're dealing with some other thing. Maybe it's addiction. Maybe it's a habit. Maybe it is um, a way that you indulge in some vice. And the vice might not even to you seem like anything terrible, but it is creating a habit that has 
formed out of some void or some lack of dealing or some rage or some anger or some unforgiveness. And I just knew that I did not want to walk into um, my future holding on to the scars of the rejection coming from my past, but I didn't know how to navigate that. I didn't have a clear pathway. And so at 15, I did what I knew how to do, which is something I still do, which is right. I poured out my heart in letters. I poured out my heart letting my father know exactly how I felt. I let it out on paper. I didn't at the time know how to locate him. And so until I had an address, I didn't even send it. But there was just this freedom that came over me from being able to release him from being able to forgive myself for the things that I had done too in the relationship as a result of being hurt. I had to release him to be able to experience true love. Beyond that, something that really manifested in my life um, that I did not think possible was that I got to experience the love of my Heavenly Father. I think sometimes we resist a relationship with God because we think God to be as the fathers or as the fatherly figures or as the men who have scarred or damaged us in our lives. And I want to tell you that that is so far from the truth. You know, I heard this preacher say once that someone can only love us based on the capacity of love that's in their love tank. So if they only can give a pint of love, meaning they only know love at that measure, then all that they can give us is that pint. Whereas somebody else may have a gallon of love and they have richly been able to pour that out on us so that we get to experience love from that person, maybe in a different way than someone else. But often when it comes to our parents, we want them to love us to the full. Sometimes their capacity is empty. And so how was I able to honor my father? I have a good relationship with my father today. I thank God for redeeming it. But had he not redeemed that relationship, I would still know the fullness of a father's love because my relationship and my inviting Christ in to my life at a place when I was at my lowest, when I thought that I couldn't rebound, when I thought there was no escape, is exactly the place that he came in and became a never ending well, a never ending storage place of love and he didn't condemn me because of what I'd done. He didn't hold it over my head because of the things that I had gone through. He didn't wave it over like a flag when I went backwards or when I misstepped. Instead, he loved me with his everlasting love and he gave me to understand that a good father did not necessarily reflect the father that I had, but God's grace is sufficient to make up the difference. And in redeeming that love, he taught me what it is to love someone else because of experiencing his unconditional love. I can love the fact that my father did not have a full tank. I can love him from the tank that he had to give, knowing that God is yet able to be a father to a father that was still a wounded son. I can see that more clearly now because I've experienced what it is to have those empty places in my heart and to be filled with the love of Christ. And so it is in our ability to open up and let God in that we can experience a good father and that we can get to a place where we're able to love and honor those where they are, whether they are here or whether they have passed for what capacity they were able to love us in. Furthermore, we can commit to be better than what we receive. We can commit to love more intentionally than what we may have been loved as. We can commit to do a better job of being honest with our own selves and with our own children about our own flaws so that they too understand that we will not be able to always give them the fullness, that there will be some days that we're depleted. There will be some times where we misspeak. There will be moments where we get it wrong, but yet there is a father that can make up the difference, that can fill in the gaps. And so I want to just encourage you, someone that is out there today, that there is a good father that is waiting with open arms to love you to no end, flaws and all, to help you come out of the miry clay, to pull you out in fact, 
and to wash you again, to wash you with forgiveness, to clear and cleanse out bitterness and rage and anger and unforgiveness, to heal broken hearts, to mend those areas that seem irreparable. God is able. I am a living witness that God is able, that my best moments today are because I've experienced the peace and the love of Christ that is able to rearrange your life. So today, my prayer is that God, whoever is out there listening, that needs to experience your undying love, your unfailing love, your goodness, your graciousness, your capacity to give us more than we could ever imagine, your mercy, whoever needs to understand that there is a simple yes that opens the gateway for you to come in and begin the work, that we should not wait until we have cleaned up first, that we are not in a place where we can get ourselves to be so good that we deserve love. No, your love is unconditional, and yet you give it freely to those that trust that they can receive it on today. And I thank you, God, for healing somebody's broken heart concerning their relationship, somebody that was dropped, somebody that was scarred, somebody that believes that they can't come back, that they can't rebound from the seeds that were planted in their childhood. I declare that you will transform them, and God, you will renew them, God, and return to them the joy of salvation that only love can give. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. And I pray, God, and I thank you for every father, every biological father, every spiritual father, every mentor that's fathering, every coach that's been positioned to stand in the gap for someone that is fatherless, every adopted father. I pray, God, that they would experience the depth of your love so that they can represent you in their homes, represent you to their children, represent that it's you and not them that they have to hang their perfection on, that it's you, God, that we can come to understand the greatness of love and that we can be better because we've experienced it in the areas of our greatest weakness. I want to personally say thank you to my husband, the father of my children, who is a good father, who's been able to demonstrate love because he understands the love of his heavenly father. So I thank you guys for listening. I pray that there was something of encouragement in this video. Happy Father's Day to every father as we approach this holiday coming up. So I thank God for all of you. God bless you.